Hello again, Coffee Chat friend. Steve here with a coffee chat on something called common sense. We've all heard about it a lot. And the reason this topic came about is because a friend of mine sent me an email. It was actually a forwarded email from, let's see who it was, who was the originator of this email. It's a guy named Robert P. Beckerson. So where credit is due, Robert B. Beckerson. Both. It was kind of a, it was a quasi-humorous little piece on, they called the obituary, obituary printed in the, in the London Times. Maybe it wasn't by him, maybe he forwarded it from the London Times, I don't know, but anyways, says starts off by saying, today we mourn the passing of a beloved old friend, Common Sense, who had been with us for many years. No one knows for sure how old he was, since his birth record has long been lost in bureaucratic red tape. He will be remembered as having cultivated such values as knowing when the rain comes out, why the early bird always gets the worm, but life isn't always fair, and maybe it was my fault. It goes on. I could maybe put a link for it, but I won't read a lot of it there. But it goes on to talk about uh, talk more about this bureaucracy and this tendency of how this law and that law came to be it doesn't make any common sense. Well, the question is, I guess, according to there, he says it's lost. Is it really lost, or do we have any common sense? Is this such a thing? Well. We've heard the term common, the word common used before in terms of common law and common sense, right? I looked up common sense just to get a, you know, a first look terminology as to what many people might use it in reference to. And of course I used my trusty Wikipedia, looked it up, and I found that it's a, it's a basic ability to perceive, understand, and judge, which is shared by and in brackets, common to all people. So if it's common to all people, then we must have it, right? We must have this thing called common sense. So, I would say that in this article, if you read it, it talks once again about the laws and this sort of thing. And I would have to say that, oh, Sorry about that. It's a bit windy and rainy, and my <laughs> my camera just got blown over. If you're wondering why there's little weird spots on the screen, it's because there's raindrops hitting it. It won't take too long here. So you'll notice that there's government involved, and whenever there's government, I find there is fear and propaganda. People, we do stuff because we fear the repercussions of not, and of course, in order for us to be subservient to things that. We've, we've constructed, you know, subservient to our own creations, which is how bizarre this is, we must be propagandized. And of course, this starts at a very young age because our parents have been propagandized. We're put in public propaganda institutes called schools. And therefore, common sense, though it may be there, is over, we override it, I would say. And it's, and it, number one, I would say, there's probably other reasons, but the first one is, the fear response, which is a self-defense mechanism, I would say. And the second one is the propaganda and programming. So the fear response is we override it, though we recognize that the common sense is there. And the propaganda and the programming allows us to be completely oblivious to the common sense, which might be under an undertow that we really have, but we just were oblivious to it because of the propagandization that we've gone through. So yes, I would say that we do have common sense. The thing is, we just don't act upon it. We don't act upon it because, once again, the fear and the propaganda. So what could be the solution to this? What could be, not so much a solution, but how can we work on ourselves to be more in tune with the ability to perceive, understand, and judge to the best of our ability? Well, I would say one of the things we could start with is just listening. Be aware of the commonsensical urge within us to sense, perceive, 
understand and to judge as best we can. And then to, to check the fear. In other words, if, if, if we feel the fear coming up of acting, see if this fear is legitimate. In other words, if we know that we're going to get in dire trouble of um, people attacking us who, ha who are, you know, government agents and whatever, then we will act, we will do, we will, do, we will sub submit to it, but not because there's any legitimacy, but because we know then that it is self-defense. So we're not overriding the common sense to do one thing or the other. We're just rationally and consciously acting in a defensive, self-defensive mechanism to be able to um, to confirm the fear. So the firm is the fear is legitimate in that case. And the second thing we can do, so so to listen, listen to our, you know, get get in touch with the common sense. Number one, number two. Uh, check into the fear, which we just talked about. And the third is to ask ourselves, where is this propaganda coming from? And this programming coming from? And what is the motivation for it? What we find out is that propaganda and, and, and uh, programming that's coming towards us in the form of media, so-called education and so on, is not in our best interest. It's almost never in our best interest. If it is, well, that's sort of a, um, a coincidence, you might say. But if you think about it, if somebody's trying to sell us something, they have come to us to try to sell us something, be it propaganda, programming, whatever, this is not something that we, we have asked for. So in being aware of that, we can once again, we can act in spite of the propaganda because we've become aware of it. By listening, observing, we become aware of what's going on. We recognize the legitimacy of the fear because there might be some real danger, once again. And by questioning where's this propaganda coming from, soon enough we find out it's not in our best interest, so we're better off just to ignore it or to to alter our activities based on what is more real for us rather than just acting upon the propaganda as basically propagators and continuers of the propaganda. So common sense, has it really died? I don't think it I don't think it has. Because if we could, first of all, if we could acknowledge that this is not taking place as much anymore. We're not acting upon it anymore, as that obituary would would, would entail or would would sort of humorously put forward, then because we're talking about it means it is not gone. It is there. It's just that we've relegated it to the back bench because we're trying to be safe. We're trying to defend ourselves against uh, agents who would want us to do other than our will. And two, we're all often oblivious to it, even though it might be deep down in there, a little urge, but we're not able to figure it out because we've been so heavily propagandized and programmed for the good of others and the good of sometimes nefarious purposes. So it's there, I say. It's for us to wake up to it and to make something of it. Now we're getting more and more rain and I don't know if this screen is gonna show up very well because there's all kinds of raindrops on my, on my screen there. But uh, it is a fairly mild day, but it's a bit blustery and a bit rainy. So I'll sign off for now. It's been great chatting again. My name is Steve, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.